Hi, I'm Loretta Kreitz, and I'm back today to show you some of my favorite quilts from the Road to California Quilt Show. Most of these are from the competition, but there are a few from special exhibits. I hope you enjoy them. This quilt is stunning. It's part of a special exhibit of quilt by artists who appeared on the quilt show. I love the colors in this quilt. They're absolutely gorgeous. The artist makes their own bias tape for outlining all these shapes. You can see some of the detail here. It is beautifully quilted and there is hand beadwork on the quilt. There are some cutouts. There's just so much going on. Following are three quilts also from a special exhibit. These are quilts that were all done by the same artist and they work so beautifully together. The colors are just lovely. I'm not typically drawn to abstract quilts, but the colors in these are just so beautiful and evocative. Carol has an incredible ability with color. She is an award-winning and incredibly well-respected artist in the quilting community. Up next is a color works design. It seems like we always have one or two of these designs in the show. This quilt is by a Canadian artist. And again, I love the colors that she used for this design. It was not an award winner, but I found her color combination so pretty and the applique so festive that I had to photograph it. The quilting on it is stunning as well. The quilting was done by Julia Quiltoff. I think with a name like Quiltoff, you have to end up becoming a quilter. I think that's just inevitable. Most years, my photos are almost exclusively pictorial quilts, but this year there is a real mix in the quilts that caught my eye. This is Charlie the Elephant and the use of both the natural colors and the more fanciful colors I thought were really fabulous in this piece. This quilt was by the same Canadian artist as Valley Blossoms earlier. I've seen a variety of these kinds of round the world houses quilts, but I like the way that she incorporated the Kafe facet fabrics and that she designed her own paper piecing pattern for the Space Needle and the Atkinson Point Lighthouse to make it more personal. Here you can see the detail of the Space Needle. The quilting on this is also very beautiful. The quilting was done by Faith McLeod. It's funny, sometimes you can really tell why the title relates to a quilt, and sometimes it's a little harder. This one is called The Troubadour. You have to look carefully to see there's a little blue bird on the left side and it is singing. The artist said, as an homage to quilters from the past, she modified the traditional mariner's compass block to capture the magic of petals unfolding on a giant mammoth sunflower. And that the bird is serenading his companion at the tune of O oh Solo Mio. It's completely machine pieced and won a first place ribbon for its category. This is a quilt by a friend of mine, Sarah Ann Smith. She lives in Maine, and this quilt is of an apple tree that is along her driveway. She said that she loves the architecture of the branches, which are best seen in winter. She won third place for the category Naturescape. Up next is an artist whose work is always beautiful. It was hard to take a good picture because of where they had placed it at the show. It is a rhododendron that she said her mama planted within her forest garden. It is a particular blue purple variety of rhododendron in full bloom. The way Andrea approaches her quilts and her quilting is just gorgeous. Obviously the judges agreed. They awarded it a first place in Naturescape. Andrea also dresses beautifully, by the way. This quilt is so charming. I don't always like this kind of traditional applique quilt, but this one just had so much detail it sucked me in. 
The quilting was exquisite, and there are so many fun, fanciful parts to it. Here you can see the long shot, and you can't even hardly appreciate everything that's going on from this long shot. So here's a closer look where you can start to appreciate the intense quilting that was done on this. She said that her grandmother was a fabulous baker and that the artist Linda used her grandmother's Christmas cookie cutters to make this quilt. She also said the horse shape was a favorite that everyone fought over every year, even as adults. She used English paper pieced hexagons to create the borders around all of the blocks and then also to do the binding edge. It's just fabulous. Then here on these little aprons, there are tiny buttons. I spent a long time looking at all the details on this quilt because there was so much to take in. The Gift is by Kathy McNeil. She's another regular on the Quilt Awards circuit. Her quilts are so detailed and so complex. This one is Santa and a little girl. You really do need to see this in person to appreciate all the details that are going on in this quilt. It won second place portrait category. Going in a little closer here, so many details on this little girl's coat. It's a crazy quilt in and of itself. Then if you look behind her, there is a little trio of mice singing Christmas carols. So charming. I always love Kathy's work. It is delightfully intricate and whimsical. This quilt is also by a quilting luminary. I don't always agree with the judges. A lot of times quilts that interest me are not the ones that win awards. This year, however, the award-winning quilts were all so eye-catching. This is another one that was incredibly eye-catching. Margaret said that the quilt's name derives from a 1973 Queen song and aptly describes her state of mind while she waited to quilt this, as she had just gone through the painful journey of her father's death. The final quilting touch was adding titles to 35 Queen songs to the outer border. She must be quite a fan. Again, this is a quilt you've got to see up close to appreciate the amazing amount of work that has gone into it. I'll zoom in as best we can, but that's why attending the show in person is really something you should do if you can. It was awarded first place large piece. As a pictorial quilter myself, this is the kind of quilt I am typically drawn to. We travel frequently to Sedona and to the Grand Canyon. So these kinds of views of the canyons and all the red rocks there are something that I'm familiar with. Sandra's interpretation of this scene and the way she accomplished so much depth and range in this quilt is so beautiful. It was awarded second place pictorial. The original photo is of the Grand Canyon National Park with a view of the Colorado River. It's raw edge fused applique, machine quilted with little bits of paint or inks here and there just to add a touch more depth. If you caught my newsletter last month, you got a sneak peek of this one. I liked it because it's so bright and cheerful. My husband took a course on carousel horse carving many years ago. And so carousel horses are something I definitely appreciate and look at in great detail, as clearly did the artist of this particular quilt. This quilt is so stark and yet so stunning in its simplicity. The artist is from Spain. She said that this quilt is inspired by the sensations and feelings that people have to feel when they are forced to leave their home for different reasons and go to a place unknown to them. Feelings of loneliness, closed windows and doors. This is one of those times when the artist's description can really help enhance your appreciation of a particular piece. The maker of this quilt is from Japan and the quilt won a director's choice ribbon. This is such a festive and happy quilt. I love the dots. 
I think that's something that really adds to the sense of movement on this quilt and the colors as well I love. I also appreciate that the top has a wider header and that not all the borders are the same. There are so many things that I appreciate about this quilt, but especially the happy, bright, cheerful colors. These next images are from a special exhibit, the Cherry Wood Challenge. This is only about half the quilts in the exhibit. What makes this exhibit so exceptional is the fact that the fabrics are all the same. You have to use a particular palette of fabrics. The quilts are all the same size and they're all on a theme. There are so many different ways that people interpret this theme and to see all of these quilts in mass is just phenomenal. A few pieces that really caught my eye this year. Graffiti was the theme and so there are different forms of quilts interpreting the theme of graffiti. So very fun and so very colorful. Creativity can never be used up. The more you use it, the more you have. I absolutely agree with that one. This quilt was by a good friend of mine, my BFF, Cindy Myers. She's been participating in the Cherrywood Challenge now for several years and was delighted to be one of the award winners for this year. As a palette cleanser, I'm going to finish off with three quilts from another special exhibit. This one called A Season in Blue. They are by Aditya Sitar of Laundry Basket Quilts. I love two color quilts. Here are blue and white trees. Blue and white I think is particularly calming and refreshing. This nine patch Irish chain is beautiful and graphic. We'll finish up with these blue and white houses. I hope you enjoyed my take on this year's quilts at the Road to California Quilt Show. If you enjoyed this video, click the button and please subscribe to receive info on new releases. And thank you so much for watching.